If you enjoy my videos, don't forget to like them, share them, and subscribe to my channel. And remember, small YouTube channels like this can't be monetized. So if you're able to support me by becoming a patron, it really helps. My Patreon link is in the description. I want to share something in this video which has become important to my understanding of Mabonap Modron, and that's his relationship with a deity known in Roman Britain as Cunomaglos. This is a Celtic name, which I don't think is found in Gaul. The Cuno part means dog or hound, while Maglos means chief or lord. Sometimes it's translated as prince. So the name means something like hound lord or master of hounds, almost certainly a deity in charge of dogs. In Roman Britain, the Cuno Maglos is paired with Apollo. The Romans liked to pair local deities with whichever of their own they thought was most similar. The attributes of the Roman Apollo are quite varied. He's associated with healing, with the sun and youth, with hunting and the female huntress Diana, who is his sister. And he's associated with poetry and music, especially the music of the lyre. Another Celtic deity paired with Apollo in Britain, of course, is Maponos. Now, Maponos is also known on the continent. There was a massively important healing site at Chamalier in France, and another one that we don't know much about at Savigny. In Britain, there are a number of altars and inscriptions to Maponos, mostly Apollo Maponos in the north, three along Hadrian's Wall, and another one at Ribchester near modern day Blackpool. Two of these show a figure with both a lyre and symbols of hunting. Whether these figures are meant to depict Apollo or Maponos or both, we can't really say, but they're similar to other Roman carvings of Apollo. In the same part of Britain, there are a few place names which relate to Maponos, like Maporeton, the ford of Maponos, and there are also two notable places seemingly named for Mabon, the town of Loch Maben in Dumfrieshire and the Clach Mabenstein near the shores of the Solway. There's also this curious carving, which was found at a nearby Roman fort, which seems to mention Maponos, with what appears to be a carving of a dog. It's not very conclusive. All of this activity is concentrated in the north, mostly near Hadrian's Wall, but we don't find any mention of Maponos in southern Britain. Maponos seems to reappear later in Welsh literature, though, as Mabonap Modron. He is mentioned in the Book of Taliesin, the Book of Carmarthen, the Triads of Britain, and the Stanzas of the Graves. However, it's in the story of Kilhoch and Alwyn, one of the native tales found in the Mabinogion, that we finally learn more about Mabon of Modron. Kilhoch and Alwyn concerns a quest for a supernatural Irish boar known as the Turk Turith. Mabon is central to the story because the boar cannot be hunted without his help. Turk Truth can only be successfully pursued by a special hound called Dridwan, and only Mabon can control this dog. In the famous exchange between the giant Ispadadin, who instigates the hunt, and the young hero Kilhoch, Ispadadin says, Turk Truth will not be hunted until Dridwan, the pup of Graid, son of Eri, is got. And then Kilhoch responds, It is easy for me to get that, though you may think it will not be easy. This exchange continues with Espadarin saying, though you may get that, there is that which you will not get. There is no huntsman in the world who might have the skills to hunt with that hound, except for Mabon, son of Modron, who was taken from his mother at three nights old. It is not known where he is, nor which he is, either alive or dead. I think it's fair to say that this text is describing Mabon as a lord or master of hounds here. And there's another mention of this skill a bit further on in the story. A considerable chunk of Kilhoch and Alwyn is taken up with the search for Mabon, during which Arthur's men question a series of animals. Eventually, an ancient salmon leads them to him, and the significant thing to our exploration is where he's found, Gloucester, on the banks of the Severn. And the salmon says, as much as I know, I will tell. With each flood tide, I come up along the river as far as the bend at the wall in Cairloyu, and there I found such misfortune as I have never found in my life. 
The misfortune the salmon is talking about is the lamentation of Mabon in his prison in the dungeons of the castle. The storyteller goes to great lengths to emphasize how Mabon has been imprisoned in the castle for an immeasurably long time. What I think we're seeing here is a deep relationship being drawn between Mabon ap Modron and Gloucester and the Severn. Gloucester Castle no longer exists, but you can see from this old engraving from when it was still in use as a prison in the 18th century, how close to the water it was. Anyway, the long and the short of it is that Arthur and his men free Mabon so that they can all get on with the job of hunting the Turk Trith, or at least preparing to do so. There are a whole list of side quests that Arthur and his men have to perform on Kilhook's behalf, including the acquisition of more hunting dogs, and this episode is described here. After that, Arthur went to Brittany, and Mabon, son of Meft, went with him, and Gwarai, golden hair, to seek the two dogs of Glithvur, the Breton. And Mabon, son of Meft, went with the two dogs of Glithvur, the Breton, in his hand, and Dridwan, the pup of Gride, son of Eri. It's reasonable to assume that Mabon, son of Meft, here is just another way of speaking about Mabon ap Modron. So now we see Mabon in charge of three famous hunting dogs. One thing I haven't mentioned is the reason why they must hunt the Turk Trith. This fierce giant of a boar has a comb, a razor, and a scissors lodged in the bristles between his ears. And these items are needed to shave and barber the giant, Espadadin. Yeah, you really need to read the whole story. Now the tale trundles on toward the big showdown between Arthur's forces and the Turk Truth who by now has left Ireland and is threatening to lay waste to Cornwall. And here we find Mabon in his moment of glory back at the river Severn. And they turned back from there along the Severn and they waylaid him there with all there was of proven warriors in the island. And they drove him by sheer force into the Severn. And Mabon son of Modron went with him on white Dunmain, the horse of Gwedu into the Severn. And Arthur made an attack on him and the champions of Britain with him. And then it goes on to mention some of the warriors by name. And they grasped him first by the feet and they dunked him in the Severn so that it was flooding over him. Mabon, son of Modron, spurred his stallion on one side and got the razor from him. And here, once Mabon has orchestrated this attack and taken the razor, he disappears from the story and he isn't mentioned again. So I promised to tell you about Cuno Maglos, and before I do, I'll just recap on what we've discovered about Mabon ap Modron. Through his relationship to Maponos, we might associate him both with healing and with the Roman god Apollo. And through the points I've highlighted in Kilhuch and Alwyn, his close, somewhat mystical association with the river Severn is clear, as is his superior ability with hunting dogs. Evidence for the cult of Cunomaglos is centered in the Cotswolds to the south of the Severn, where various artifacts have been found. By far the best documented site is the one at Nettleton Shrub, which was used and reused over several centuries and appears to have been associated with a healing cult. This is a complex site archeologically, which was thoroughly investigated by W.J. Wedlake between 1956 and 1972. I want to look at some excerpts of Wedlake's summary of the history of the site. Soon after AD 69, a small circular shrine, probably dedicated to the god Apollo, was built in the valley alongside the river, possibly superseding a Celtic religious cult already established in the valley. The construction of a large hostel along the Fossway and a spectacular rectangular hall in close proximity to the shrine indicates a growing interest in the shrine. They were followed about AD 230 by the erection of a large octagonal podium, which encompassed a small shrine. This arrangement continued until about AD 250, when the circular shrine was destroyed by fire. Subsequently, a large octagonal temple was built on the octagonal podium, which survived the fire. After the construction of the octagonal temple, a larger hostel was built and the settlement continued to develop at an astonishing rate. Additions were made to buildings to cope with the increasing interest in the cult center. Soon after AD 330, 
it ceased to be used for pagan worship and the building fell into a state of disrepair. And evidence suggests that the building was used as a Christian church. But for a short period, about AD 370, a small north part of the former central shrine was set up and used for a brief resurgence of pagan worship. The abundant evidence of fire and a large number of late fourth century coins in the fire debris suggests raids by Irish pirates who came by way of the Bristol Channel. At some time after the turn of the fifth century, the settlement came to an abrupt end. Many human bones found in the latest level testify that the inhabitants met with a violent death. This is the inscribed altar mentioned by Wedlake. It's somewhat broken, but the inscription is clear. To the god Apollo, Cunomaglos, Karotica, daughter of Eutus, paid her vow willingly, deservedly. So the altar was erected and paid for by a woman. We can only wonder what vows she made to Cunomaglos or what stories she knew about him, for he surely will have had a myth or two. This beautiful bronze plaque also comes from Nettleton. In 2013, another depiction of Cunomaglos was found at Sidley Castle, having long been misplaced in a cupboard. A BBC article at the time said that there were a total of four depictions of Cunomaglos from the Cotswolds and three from London, but I haven't been able to track any more down to show you. What strikes me are the similarities in associations between Mabonap Modron and Cunomaglos, dogs and healing, and a close association with Apollo and the Severn.